Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome to a look at Trine 2. This is the forthcoming title from Frozen Bite and published by Atlas. Those wonderful, wonderful people at Atlas. I do like Atlas as a publisher. They publish some really crazy stuff. And as it turns out, they're also going to publish Trine 2. Now, Frozen Bite, up until this point, has been indie. And technically, I suppose, still is. This is a publishing arrangement for a single game. Now, you might remember my video of the original Trine, which was part of the Humble Frozen Bite bundle. Now, in this case, I'm able to show you some Trine 2 that you won't have seen before. Now, you might have seen some beta footage over on, say, Yogscast's channel, for instance. Now, I went to the studio, because I like showing off, and I was able to play levels of the game which no one has actually seen yet. So I'm going to show you a bit of the intro, just to get you into what Trying 2 is actually all about. You can see the interactive menu screen right here, has me screwing around and getting used to the controls once again, as well as showing off their new graphics technology. And then I will show you footage, co-op footage in fact, of levels that nobody has actually seen yet, and will be available in the full game, which is out in December. So, without further ado, here we go. Let's have a look at Trying 2. Just going to check out the usual things and actually find ourselves a save slot. There's actually a story behind this. So I went to the Frozen Bite Studios twice. The first one, we discovered that they had no login details for an account that had a save that was quite far on. So we decided, oh, well, we'll just show you like the start of it a little bit then. And then when you come back next time, one of our testers can give you one of his crazy accounts. He's got everything unlocked and all the great stuff. That's the plan, at any rate. Just FYI, this footage was recorded a couple of weeks ago in Finland. Once upon a time, there were three valiant heroes chosen by a magical artifact called the Trine. You may have heard another tale of how they met. Let me tell you a story of their latest adventure. Something mysterious and magical was taking place in the forest. First of the three heroes was Amadeus, a wizard. Not perhaps the bravest or the most powerful, but he was clever and sensible. Then there was Pontius the knight, fearless protector of the realm, who loved good food, drink and battle. Last but not least was Zoya, a thief. An entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. She was mysterious, and only seen as a passing shadow on a cloudy night. Amadeus the wizard was asleep in his cottage. It was a place where he could study his fireball spell, hidden from the scornful eye of his wife. Turn it off. I'm sleeping here. What is it? Who's there? All right, there you go. There's some narration and things just to get you into the swing of it, give you a little bit of information. Please bear in mind that this is a pre-release version of the game and does not necessarily represent the final product. Oh my God, is this game beautiful. Holy hell. I mean, I thought the first game was good looking. For an indie game, I think Trine was probably one of the best looking in terms of sheer graphical fidelity. But I'm just talking about graphic style and graphic design here. Because, of course, graphic quality is something that's quite subjective. And it often comes down to, well, does the style suit the game? In this case, you actually have a game that both has a very distinctive style. But it's also a game that actually has just sheer graphical horsepower under the hood. I mean, you, the, you can see the lighting effects, the shading, the shadows, the whole goddamn thing looks magical. You know, I'd use that term in a fairly serious manner in that it's a fair, its design is kind of a fairy tale world and I think they represent that absolutely perfectly. And this even blows the first trine out of the water in terms of the great looking graphics. 
Alright, so here I'm playing as the Wizard. The Wizard is one of the three characters available in Trine, and this is his intro story segment, which gets you back into the game. If you haven't played the first game, from what I've seen, it really doesn't matter. It's a game that works absolutely fine for anyone that hasn't gone through the first. There's little bits here and there in the story, but... For the most part, you all you really need to know is there's a magical item called the Trine, which forces three heroes to sort of merge together and complete various levels. That's pretty much about it, and there's some evil going on and such, such nonsense and so forth. Alright. So... The wizard can create various different geometric shapes, and some of them out of thin air. You can also levitate objects, which is kind of handy. Through the forest, leading Amadeus further. Torn between fear and wonder, he followed. You'll also notice that the game is punctuated by these narration scenes. Very much, uh, it's kind of Bastion style, only not quite as extreme. I mean, Bastion narrates almost everything. Uh, Trine doesn't necessarily do that, but you've got this amazing narrator going through. You'll also notice there's experience potions there, which will help you level up and gain new abilities. A lot of those are difficult to get to, deliberately so. Oh well, what is that? Not this again. Yes, this again. And there is our second hero. Yes. Hamadeus, get your things! We need to save the kingdom! What? Oh, this won't do at all, Pontius. I've children waiting for me to come home. I can't leave. But your magics are needed. The kingdom is in danger. <sighs> Will this nightmare ever be over? Despite his reluctance, Amadeus knew that the heroes were needed once more. How did you end up here? Let me tell you. Pontius had headed out that evening, for there was trouble on the peasant farms. Creeping vines were taking over the fields. Hmm. A warlock must be behind this devilry. I'll find him and teach him a lesson with my sword. All right, and this is Pontius the warrior. So he's very much your combat guy. Now, you might find that this guy's even more useful in this version of the game. Yes, quite. Particularly because you can actually up the combat difficulty to hard. Now, some people complain about trying being too easy. So, if you up your combat difficulty, you're probably not going to find that. I want it. Give it to me. The nasties must have fled at the sight of me. Oh, well, never mind. I guess I can't get a hold of that. But, yeah, get, getting a hold of these experience orbs and things like that is often a challenge and requires some creativity. Admittedly, you can switch between the heroes later on, which makes things a little easier. And obviously, in the multiplayer, you'll have access to more heroes at once. All right, down we go. Once again, the actual design of this game, from an aesthetic standpoint, is unbelievable. Wow. I mean, look at how beautiful this game is. You cannot... I'm sorry, even the most jaded gamer cannot possibly say that this is not a pretty looking game. It is. There's some animation bugs going on here and there, but this is because this is actually a pre-release version. This is the stuff that you can't get this on Steam. There's a multiplayer beta. This version is a different build. I'm Pontius the Brave, and I won't fall in a battle with dandelions. The voice acting certainly gives the game some character, I think, as you can clearly tell. And now you're blind. The Trine! Pontius had never understood what exactly the Trine did, but he knew that the artifact was there to help. And so Pontius felt happy. He couldn't think of a better quest than saving his kingdom. Late that night, Zoya was concealed in the shadows, hidden from the shimmering moonlight. Now, I was talking to one of the developers at this point while I was doing the playthrough, and he said, Oh, we can tell that you played Trine 1. Why? Because you're trying to hook all the things. That's pretty much what Trine players used to do. It's like, what can I grab onto? 
Now, in the first game, it was actually quite easy to bypass almost all of the obstacles simply using the thief. However, there are now less things you can grab onto, so you've got to be a little bit more clever. But look at that. I, I, I'm a sucker for good sky domes. I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. In this case, I'm a sucker for good backgrounds and lighting effects. This game is beautiful. There's no doubt about it. And if you don't believe so, you're wrong. I don't care if aesthetic choice is a purely subjective thing. This game is gorgeous. And you're an ugly person inside if you don't believe so. Quick, let's talk about something else. So the game starts to get interesting, as you imagine, can imagine anyway, when you get through the intro. This is really just to re-familiarize people with how the game actually works, and of course to teach people that have never played the first game how the basic mechanics operate. And then of course you're going to start switching between the three characters. Alright, let's make our way up here then, shall we? No problemo, I say. Oh, and this is something I'll point out, that this window right here... Those of you who have ever been to Durham Cathedral, I believe they based this on the Rose Window in Durham Cathedral. I don't think they actually knew. This is me stopping to tell them that while I'm doing the session with them. And they were saying, oh, the artist probably just pulled that one off as inspiration from Google Images. And I'm saying, that is the Rose Window. It, simply, it, it really is. It looks exactly like it. Those of you who don't know, that cathedral is extremely old. And the rose window has been around for many hundreds of years. Alright. Up we get. And now we can finally show you some of the gameplay that you will see if you happen to be playing the game past the introduction. Which I should certainly hope you should, because this is a 10 hour experience that's coming in here. How inconvenient. What are you doing here in the middle of the night? Not back to your old tricks and thievery. <laughs> oh, there's a perfectly good explanation for this. Tell me, where are we going? We don't really know yet. Something strange is going on. A new venture. Shall we go then? So the trine had come for the heroes, and the adventure was ready to begin. Amadeus worried for his family, while Pontius looked forward to their new quest. Zoya, of course, imagined what fabulous treasure they might find. I ain't saying she a gold digger. Alright, this will take him to the forlorn wilderness, but we're going to skip forward to something a little bit more exciting. This is a much later level coming up right now. Here we go. Amadeus recalled a time when he had made a mushroom potion in his school days. Indeed, that had not ended well. As the heroes climbed out of the caverns, they met with the first light of morning. All right, so let's go into Sea Rock Castle, one of the much later and much harder levels. Now, yes, it is. Thank you. Smash him stuff. Okay, so this is me playing with one of the developers. We're playing two-player mode right here. The game supports up to three players now in online as well. That's one of the problems with Train, the original. It didn't have that. This has full online support now on all platforms. Thank God. You can still play full three-player local as well. Huge hairy fruit up in those trees. They're called coconuts. Ooh. So there's some huge hairy nuts. No, they're fruit. Shouldn't they be called cocoa fruit then? I... I don't know. Huge hairy nuts, eh? Let me introduce you to this giant enemy crab. You can't actually kill it, and quite frankly you wouldn't want to because it's goddamn adorable, but you can jump on it in order to bypass it. Animation quality, as you can see here, has taken a major upturn, as has the quality of the water effects. This game is beautiful. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to keep beating you around the head with it until you understand. Alright, so... Those of you who haven't seen too much of this game, it's a mixture of physics puzzles as well as platforming and action combat. In this case, we're going to use the wizard and the thief. And I'll probably get myself killed. No, I'm okay. All is fine. Hey, was that me or the developer? I can't really remember. And I think I'm now getting stabbed. That's yeah, very unfortunate. Try and get out of the way here. 
Now what you can do is you can set up a box, for instance, on top of that. Or you could just have a box, levitate it, have them jump on the box and get over that way. There's actually two, another mode in this. Uh, I think, uh, is it called Unlimited? Maybe it is. Something along those lines that allows you to have, say, three thieves, three warriors or whatever. You can do pretty much whatever you want. There's also a lot of secret areas in here. Now, you're not going to see any experience orbs in the rest of this video simply because this is one of the testers' accounts and they've got all of the experience. So, that's not there. But what you can do is use the various abilities to get past areas and access hidden items and things like that. Of which there are quite a few, including secret weapons and such the weapons, as far as I can see, do only have relevance for the knight and the thief. The magician has some new spells at his disposal. However, he's not going to be wielding weapons anytime soon. Alright, I'll hop ourselves up here. I think there's some combat coming, in which case you get to see some of the new combat mechanics. There are actually these mini-bosses every now and again. And also, look at the background there. The enemies don't just spawn in, they actually come from the background, which is really neat. And you get some fairly intense combat sections. You can see there, we're using a flaming sword. We already lost the knight. That's how much damage you take. We're currently on hard combat mode, I believe. There's another one down. Things start to get very, very unpleasant right about now. It's okay, I'll drop boxes on them. I'm a mighty wizard. All will be fine. Or po perhaps not. I'm getting the hell out of here. There we go. Now you can respawn all of your guys. And yes, they will climb up and follow you. So you do have to be somewhat careful. By finding a one of these glowing points right here. One of these checkpoint areas. Alright, cool. We have it. All is good in that regard. Everyone is back up on their feet. But yeah, the combat has certainly taken a turn for the better this time around. It was something of a mild distraction I felt in the original trying simply because of a lack of difficulty. But here it's much, much tougher and should provide a challenge for everyone concerned. As regards to whether or not this game is valid as a single-player experience as opposed to just a multiplayer, I'd certainly say so. I mean, the first one definitely was, but here I think they have put a little bit more emphasis on it being a multiplayer title. The thing is that there are new challenges when it comes to multiplayer, and there are less things that you can bypass simply by floating a box, for instance, which you can pretty much bypass everything if you did that in the first game. Not so much this time around. With the single player, it's a, like it's a case of trying to figure out exactly how you want to bypass a particular problem using the characters at your disposal. In the multiplayer, you've got to get all three people past an obstacle, so there are unique challenges in there. So I feel that it's worth playing through both single player and multiplayer. I was heading over in this direction, you'll actually find that there's a hidden area through there that you can break through and gain access. There's, there's nothing down there at the moment, simply because, once again, that stuff has been taken by the testers. So I'm going to skip forward a bit out of this area and show you some of the later parts of the level and then come to a conclusion on what I've seen of trying to thus far. Alright, how about some underwater stuff? Welcome to the new water effects. Oh, they're so gorgeous. So this game doesn't use a new engine. It is not the same as the original Trine engine. They have built significant additions to it. As a result, you've got all sorts of good stuff, including what appears to be some kind of sound occlusion while you're underwater, which is really cool. The swimming mechanics are pretty good for the most part. I, I didn't really have a problem with the swimming sections in the original trying too much either. I also like the fact that they've got different swim swimming animations, and the knight, for instance, doesn't swim in the same way as the thief, which I think is a really neat system. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm actually kind of surprised the knight can swim at all, but he seems to manage it one way or the other. Our Pontius is quite the mighty individual. Alright, so let's move on out of here and see what we can find. And stare at the beautiful rainbows in the background, if we like. Or alternatively, we can go for another swim. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Oh yes, of course, the evil demon thing we've got to deal with. We were having some issues with the controls here, just because the build that they were using is... Uh, a tad buggy when using a keyboard and 360 pad, but they assure us that the full version will not have such problems. And I have a feeling... No, no, we're fine. There was, thankfully, there's a checkpoint there, which means that we could res our heroes. See, I've got a flaming sword there. There's a fire bow. There's also an ice bow. Things do... You know, there's various different weapons available in this game. Some are good for different reasons. There's no obviously better weapon 
for instance, if you use the hammer. It's quite a powerful weapon. You can also throw it, but you can't use a shield with it as well. So there are disadvantages to doing that. I think when I played the original Trine, I came to the conclusion it was probably one of the best platformers I'd ever seen. And when it came just down to a wonderful marrying of concepts and different character designs and different mechanics and gameplay systems, it was probably second to none. Watch this. <laughs> That's one way to deal with it. I tell you that for a fact. That is one way to deal with it. I love the sheer variety of ways that you can just kill people in this game. You can just shove them. Or you just create a box and shove them off a cliff into a man-eating plant. There's actually an achievement for that, by the way. So that's something to bear in mind. Just keep an eye on it at some point. I am terrible when it comes to creating planks, but I'm sure everything will be fine there. Yeah, sneaky little archers. Enemy variety is also much, much better this time around. That's something that I criticized the original game for. It you know, only had a few different enemy types, loads of different enemy types this time. So that is all fantastic. I think, honestly, they fixed pretty much every gripe I had with the original. I find it so hard to pick fault with this game for what it is. Let's just ignore that. I'm not... And that. Yep, let's, let's ignore that too. <laughs> now, I was assured that there is actually... As it turns out, a save point along here. Okay, how about I show you a different environment, because the game actually broke here. Something that they codenamed the Spooky Forest. Alright, let's go for it. More so than your wife? A lot of environment variety in this one. L more so than the original. Again, just a incremental improvement in pretty much every possible respect. And... I did like the fact that they set the game up for a sequel with Trine, especially when they added the last level, because honestly, the last level of Trine was a bit of a disappointment. A lot of people criticized the game for that, and they put in this different one, but look at this. This is kind of a neat little trick we've got going on here. Just rotate that, pour in the magical water, and suddenly wonderful things will happen. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's so good. It does remind you a little bit of the living forest, doesn't it? It puts so much detail into the backgrounds, and once again, we've had a problem with the 360 pad there, but again, that's a problem with the alpha version that's being put on display here. Just gonna clobber him with a big hammer there. This game is approaching perfection, from what I've seen. I just... I can't pick fault! I'm trying! What is there to pick fault with? It seems to do everything that it wants to do extremely well. Now... That's a man-eating plant. How about we feed him one of these? Yeah, you can actually distract the man-eating plant by floating like a lantern or an item and then running past him while he's busy eating it, which I think is absolutely awesome. Of course, you can create a box or whatever in order to do that. One way to get past these areas with the fireballs is to create boxes as well. We can also pull something off there. There's actually an experiences of that we didn't find. Oh, yeah. That was actually a spiked pit. I wasn't quite paying attention. I was too busy having a look at the wonderful and beautiful backgrounds and then realized that I fell onto some spikes and died horribly. Oh well, it happens. This is much, much harder, by the way. This is quite a way through the game, so you're going to meet some fairly serious challenges by this point, especially on hard combat difficulty. <laughs> that never gets old. All right, folks. Okay, conclusion on trying to, based on this. So you've seen the intro, which you'll probably see in other people's channels, and then you've seen two exclusive pieces of footage of levels that are not in the multiplayer beta. These are much further on in the game. I don't see how you couldn't want to get a hold of this game. The soundtrack is great. The voice acting is great. The narration is great. The graphics are great. It's all pretty much awesome. Oh, we even got an achievement there. How wonderful. And it's going to be $15. What, why would it be $15? It's so much or excellent value. It's longer as well than the original. And then you've got the multiplayer in there, which naturally gives it longevity as well. You should all really consider picking this up. You can pre-order it and you can actually get into the multiplayer beta right now, which lets you play, I think, the first couple of levels in multiplayer. Just to get a taste of what it's all about. But... This is the pinnacle, I think, of indie game design. Frozen Byte are certainly one of the most talented studios in the industry at present. I don't think there's any real doubt about that. It's so good. <laughs> so very, very good.
Trying to, folks. It is out in December on 360, Mac, PS3, and PC. And there's a Linux port coming a little bit later on as well. Oh, and you can save anywhere, which is something you couldn't do in the original. That's just something I wanted to point out there. They've put that in. It's so good. So very, very good. Trying to, folks. Do seriously consider picking this up. Really, you would be doing yourself and, quite frankly, the games industry in general a disservice if you didn't. If you have any even passing interest in these physics-based combat action platformers. So much fun. My name has been Total Biscuits, an exclusive look at Trine 2, and I'll see you next time.